come to a supine position just legs a bit spread arms a bit spread head centered eyes closed let's just become aware of our breathing you can even take a few nice deep breaths so exhale completely abdomen down inhale one two three four exhale one two three four so that should do now we take a double hip flexion for a one minute so just lie down take both knees towards the chest and hug the back of the thighs so that the force the hugging force of the arms are going right into the hip socket so stay here and try to catch more towards the elbows so not too easily by the fingers you try to keep um, hugging your forearms so that the thighs keep moving towards the front torso occasionally you can also activate the hamstrings by bending the uh, knees the calves pressing down on your forearms that activates the hamstrings stay here with sensations of the hip flexion the rotation of the head of the thigh bone in the socket of the hip just try to feel all that and you can also internally rotate the hips a bit and so you want to turn the front of the thighs towards each other so those kind of thoughts get energy flowing in good ways then release that's one minute now let's do some abdomen work so lying down with the legs bent take the arms back exhale just curl upper back and head off taking knees towards the chest and slowly lie down arms back exhale two curl inhale lie down arms back exhale curl knees towards chest arms forward inhale lie down exhale curl inhale lie down exhale curl inhale lie down exhale curl inhale lie down and just rest for a few breaths and it should be for a few breaths in the sense that you become aware of the breath and you can take a couple of nice smooth deep breaths you should be already feeling a little bit of your hip flexors and your abdomen perhaps the heart is beating a touch more faster and maybe you can feel it so just be in awareness of all of these the breath the heart a slight increase in body heat be in marvel of all these responses now tuck down two exhale sit up knees to chest inhale lie down three tuck lie down four tuck lie down five tuck lie down six tuck lie down seven tuck lie down eight tuck lie down nine tuck lie down ten tuck lie down so that is um, if the earlier progression was very easy you, you could have done this otherwise you could still do the earlier one for a few more uh, weeks and then you would be able to do this easily so a couple of nice smooth deep breaths being aware of the increasing body temperature increasing heartbeat and just marveling this uh, responding um, body it's trying to send more blood to these working muscles and that's why the heart is starting a bit faster uh, all of that uh, the listening body the responding body the intelligence of it just be an acknowledgement of all that okay let's do another set so lie down arms back legs straight exhale bend legs come up inhale lie down two lie down three exhale come up lie down four exhale come up inhale lie down five exhale inhale lie down six exhale inhale lie down seven lie down eight up lie down nine lie down ten lie down eleven i lost a count a bit there i plan to do ten but one extra won't hurt so just lie down and just taking a few smooth breaths and in awareness and in gratefulness of the gift of movement Next one is a knee to chest position, passive, 
um, but a 90 degree knee flexion. So this is a problem for me. My knees tend to splay out. Uh, so I'm just putting the strap in and strapping the thighs together. So if your knees tend to open out, you do the same, strap it together, setting the timer for a minute. And then take the knees towards chest, catch the feet and um, bring the heels roughly over the knees kind of position. So it is a 90 degree knee flexion. So this for me works a bit more intensely on the it seems to increase the hip flexion um, uh, in terms of the sensations I receive. And so just staying here. Connecting to different sensations. This flexion is important in the Ashtanga jump throughs and all that. So the more the thighs can come closer, uh, the more the feet will be below my hands and that is needed when I jump through. I need that clearance. So really working on this hip flexion. At times I'm pushing feet against the hands and at times I'm trying to pull the knees and feet down away from the hands. Release, that's one minute. Now for 30 seconds, we are going to work on um, some hamstring work. So take both knees towards the chest. Setting the timer for 30 seconds. So take both knees towards the chest. Catch hold of only the right foot with one hand or both hands and dynamically straighten and bend. Straighten if you're okay, lift the head up as you straighten and bend. So continue doing so with a lot of respect uh, to the back of the knee and that uh, hamstring. You don't have to force straighten it. Keep on moving with respect and uh, maybe around 80% straightening of the knee is a good place to start and in a uh, couple of days, weeks, uh, you, it will straighten much more. And that's 30 seconds. So just rest for a few moments. Now take left knee towards the chest. This, I have got a back hip problem here. So I'm going very gentle here. So straighten and bend, straighten. If you're okay, head up, bend, straighten, head up, bend, straighten, head up, and bend, head down, straighten, head up, and bend, straighten. And that is 30 seconds. Release the legs. Now we are setting up for another 30 seconds for uh, double leg, what we call dynamic, Supta Paschimottanasana. So catch all of both feet, and then exhale, straighten both knees, inhale, bend legs. Here I'm feeling a little bit of discomfort, so I'm just going very gingerly, that's two, but perhaps some of you can really work at it in a deep manner. So just carefully working, that's three, and then bend, Four, carefully straightening and bend. Five, straighten and release. That's 30 seconds. A few smooth breaths. Exhale fully. Inhale one, two, three. Exhale one, two, three. 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 Join the legs and and take the arms overhead. Big toes touching. Arms behind. Sit up. Navasan. Lie down. Exhale, sit up, Navasan. Inhale, lie down. 
exhale sit up lie down arms back four exhale inhale lie down five exhale sit up inhale lie down six exhale sit up inhale lie down seven exhale inhale lie down eight exhale inhale lie down and rest so don't let the mind move to what you can do what you can't do just connect to the gift of yourself this embodiment this aliveness that you feel in the increased heart rate increased breath rate increased body heat your raw energy a raw process just feeling all of that okay let's do second round so exhale sit up leg straight inhale control lie down exhale sit up inhale lie down three exhale sit up inhale lie down four exhale sit up inhale lie down five exhale sit up and lie down six lie down seven lie down eight lie down nine lie down ten lie down eleven lie down and just rest and again feeling that uh, um, different sensations you're feeling with the eyes closed so right now you let go of the different identities you're not the profession that you work as you're not the relationship identity you are this energy so now let's work on some protraction and retraction so lying down protract retract so round the upper back a bit shoulder blades move outward away from the spine protract and retract you can't see it and really trying to move the shoulder blades towards the spine so just do this a few times this is important in the later sequences so just setting up here arms by the side and then you're doing shoulder blade elevation depression elevation towards the ears press towards the hips elevation press towards the feet that is depression elevation depression really press elevation depression elevation and rest so now we are going to work a little bit on body weight so one of the problems in the ashtanga sequences are people put hands on the floor too early and when they jump or move the feet hits the floor very early the weight gets taken by the legs and then your arms upper back and chest and all of that never gets a chance to strengthen to so increase the height for the hands is a good place to start in the quest for strength so this is different from handstand strength which we did in the other sequence uh, here is a kind of a horizontal arm strength and then arms in a downward position you know, yesterday was overhead arm strength so arrange two chairs um, just around hip width distance and one chair in front of you around the leg distance then because of my wrist arthritis i need the push-up bar but you won't need it so just walk back, shoulders over wrist, and gaze up a back, take the pubis towards navel. Now walk in, protract more and more, lean a bit. And at this point, you're lowering the hips under the shoulders, and then you work on this elevation, active depression, passive elevation, active depression. And then you take one leg, then the other leg over the chair. Again, work on this active depression and passive elevation a few times. And then lift one leg up a few times and the other leg up a few times really firing up your abdomen and hip flexor then step and then lean forward protract and walk back to that plank walk forward protract lean a bit now your as the hips come down you have to depress get the legs up and then go back again so there are different recruitments of strength here at this point is upper back serratus anterior at this point is traps upper traps and other muscles to depress the shoulders so just working through all these this is very important for your jump throughs and jump back there depress the shoulder blades and get the legs up depress here protract lean walk back and then just rest so resting don't get distracted just walk five steppers feeling lift 
move land lift move land lift move land and turn and uh, just taking these steps letting go everything else the breath might be a little bit more labored uh, than the supine sequences and that's fine just feeling all that the raw process that you are you're never a finished product a continuous process and through all these efforts you're giving directions to the process uh, which will bring about the adaptations uh, which we call as improvements so now for the second uh, exercise here you need a pair of socks or you can use a towel something for your feet to slide if you're using a sock don't get support from anywhere this is also good for balance as well as hip flexion just lift the leg put the socks don't sit down and put stand and put it working on your balance as well as hip flexion So here you don't need the mat but the chair tends to slip away which I actually soon will find out. So you just need two chairs here, hands on the chair. My one chair is on a mat but the other is not. So from here plank you're sliding forward, just slide forward. At this time I'm starting to find that the chair is sliding outward. So here. You just slide back and then you in my case I had to control the chair but uh, you can put chair one against the wall one on the mat in between space for sliding that's two so three as hip flexor strength abdomen strength slide back come forward and lift the legs it's four slide back I'm hopping slightly back and that's allowed too but eventually just try to slide back most of us initially will have to hop back and then just forget what happened just walk don't keep saying oh i can't do that my arms are weak just just let that go and uh, if your arms are weak and you can't do it right now that's why you're putting in the effort so just walking So next one, next round, I'm doing what I was just suggesting to you. One chair against the wall, the other on the sticky mat, and in between there is space for my feet to slide. So here actually I'm doing this tuck swings. So that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. Just rest for a few breaths. Technique-wise, what you have to remember is um, don't kind of throw legs backward so keep the tuck intact knees towards the chest and uh, keep that intact and just you're working on that protraction upper back strength and then as you swing forward you're working on that depression strength of the shoulder blades so two uh, activators of the shoulder blades in two directions this is a great drill to work for your pick up jump back uh, in that uh, ashtanga uh, vinyasa flow so normally fit hits the uh, feet hits the floor too early and you can't work on strength so now you have the clearance so you can, your arms up back shoulders all can work so second round so tuck swing forward swing back that's protraction this is depression protract depress protract depress protract and come out walking Just counting your steps as well. I'm just counting five steps one way and then the other way. Feeling the lift, move, land, lift, move, land.
Okay, so let's go to the next drill. So here I'm showing a little bit of how the bent arm work should work. So we're going on bent arm strength. So the hand should come more towards the sides of the chest, um, sides of the ribs, uh, rather than under the shoulders. So this you're not going to slide. So if you wish to, you can have the chest back on your mat. So this is the elevated uh, plank, protract, maintain protraction and then uh, you just bending arms elbows do not go back at all lean forward maximum press right back so two bend elbows lean forward press back so bend elbows lean forward elbows in front of the wrist press back and four press back okay and then come off Walking. Okay, now let's turn to the next round. So here, you're going to press like that. So lean, tuck, horizontal, press down and come up. Lean forward, chest horizontal, tuck, lift up. So bend arm tuck is what we're doing here, lean forward. And then if you want to, you can hop back, come back to that Vertical tuck, horizontal tuck, strength, press back, come forward. So again, lean, tuck, jump back or step back and come off. So these drills for today, I'm just doing, I think, one set of each. You can always pause and just do a few extra if you have the time. To bend arm strength is a very important component in that pick up, jump back to Chaturanga. And usually at that time on the floor, uh, feet is against the floor and then pushing on the feet, we just jump back. Uh, so without feet touching the floor, uh, that, that bent arm hold and jumping back, very important to develop the strength. So into the next drill. So this is, we are again going to slide. And so making some uh, clear space without mat for the slide. So either the towel or the socks. So put the hands on the chair and into that bend, slide back then plank, slide forward into that lifted danda, bend, slide back, come up, lifted danda, bend, horizontal tuck, jump back, slide forward, danda, bend. So just continuing, you're aiming for around five reps. So if this uh, jumping back is tough for you, you can always put the feet down, slide back or walk back, do it with your way you can, but get the numbers done. Really adapt it uh, in a way where you can still do it. So maybe it's a, just a quarter bend of the arms, still great. Eventually you can have that 90 degree bend of the elbows. And even if the feet are not really lifting off in that lifted tuck, it doesn't matter, feet on the floor, but really lean forward so there is a lot of weight on the hands. So next one is just a Uttanasan horizontal tuck hold and jump back. So you're 
this is a floor work so you're leaning down and since my back problem i haven't done uttanasana for a while just being a little bit careful uh, just probing this a bit and now from here you just need to lean shoulders a bit forward the bend the legs bend shoulder bend arms tuck hold for a moment jump back then plank it walk forward so the feet might not lift off initially for some of you and that's okay so here feet off jump back then come forward then lean a bit forward bent arms stuck jump back press plank walk forward and then stay in a relaxed uttanasana for a few breaths and then slowly come off and take a seat that should do for today great practice namaste